Hi everyone, uh, welcome to this new series of, of videos on the channel. Um, let me give you a little bit of an introduction. Um, in the past you'll have noticed that a lot of the videos on this channel are either kind of um, short clips that I've done uh, without kind of voiceover um, while building uh, or designing models um, or they've been the kind of deep dive into the design process uh, like we've been doing recently with the, the Hudson Hunslet build in 16mm scale. Um, those second type of videos are kind of standalone on YouTube and you can watch them without kind of um, any extra content. Uh, but the short clips were originally kind of designed so that I could embed them into blog posts I write about the, the modelling. Um, and when you view them on YouTube on their own, they're not particularly interesting, I don't think. Um, but I still want to kind of do that that approach where some models I do really deep dives and lots of videos and lots of explanation and others I post short clips showing little bits of progress here and there that are kind of interesting in some way. Um, but for those models what I thought I'd start doing would be a video at the end of the process showing you the completed model uh, that went into that discussed kind of all the interesting bits of either the kit or the design process. Um, and while I'll do that for new models, I thought also it'd be interesting to go back and look at the models I've built along the, along the way and the things I've learned that have got me to the point we're at now where I'm designing and, and building models as well as just building kits. Um, so for this video, we're going to start with this little white box, um, which um, has actually featured on the channel once before. Um, I'll put a I'll put a link up. There, um, there was an unboxing video quite early on on this channel back in uh, the end of February 2014. Um, so quite a while ago now, um, showing me unboxing the the kit that was in this in this box, um, and it was actually the first locomotive model I ever built. I'd previously built um, kind of wagon kits, buildings. Um, I'd built a very small um, N gauge layout, but I'd never actually built a, a locomotive until I bought this kit. So what's in this little box? Well, as I say, you can watch the unboxing video um, that's up on the channel. Um, but it was a kit for a um, 99 horsepower um, loco from Bagley Drury. Um, they were designed for Royal Navy armaments depots around the UK that ran on two foot gauge track. Uh, and this is uh, four millimeters to the foot scale, uh, nine millimeter gauge tracks. So that's 009. Uh, and this is the this is the completed model. I'm holding it a bit funny because the roof isn't glued on. Um, in fact, I'm going to take it off so I don't drop it. Um, there we go. Um, I'll explain why it's not glued on in a minute. Um, and yeah, this was the this was the first the first locomotive model I ever built, um, and it was brilliant. Um, it gave me the first uh, look at um, ideas and ways around that you could build you could build and design uh, locomotive kits. So what was so special about it? Well, one, um, it was built around a easy to obtain uh, chassis, um, a powered chassis. So this has got a, a Kato 11104 uh, tram chassis in it. I don't want to take this one out, so risk ruining the model, but this is one I've got for another kit I've not built yet. So you can see it's kind of nicely self-contained. Um, it's got the motor in the middle, the pickups, and a lot of these end bits is just um, plastic so it can be quite easily trimmed down quite a long way to make it short which is what I had to do uh, to get it to fit uh, in this model as you can see the the two things are the the, the, the powered chassis is just ever so slightly longer than the the loco itself so it had to be trimmed down but that's that's fairly easy to do and the nice thing about these is they're they're not particularly expensive they're very reliable very easy to work with um, there's actually a newer version of this now that's even better uh, this is this is still an older an older model but even the old models are, are really really good um, so that was one thing the other thing was that this is essentially a th well it's a 3d print um, and this was something I'd already been doing myself I'd been 3d printing uh, wagons uh, in, o in OO gauge um, so same scale different track gauge um, and um, I'd already come across some limitations of, of that process to do with things like how thin you can make walls, how small you can make details, etc. And the nice thing about this model was that it's not just 3D printed. So the shell of the model itself is kind of 3D printed 
and then parts are there are etched metal parts that are stuck on for detailing so um, you can kind of see some of the print lines just very clear careful care, just very vaguely here where I didn't clean it up very well so as you can see this this bottom bit is all 3d 3d printed and then the top was essentially an open an open shell it had some vertical struts but the rest was kind of open to the air and as I say if you go back and watch the unboxing video you'll see that um, and then all these parts were individual um, etched pieces that were stuck on to, to that and that gave you very very fine detail like the the raised area around uh, around this vent uh, the the bolt detail on this um, this very fine grill and, and makers badge on the top um, you've got windscreen wipers um, added uh, kind of front and back um, and yeah this was this was this was kind of a bit of a revelation to me that you could easily um, kind of mix the two things together uh, to produce something that was kind of easy to put together because the body was a single kind of 3d print uh, but could be really uh, you know highly detailed um, in its process and that's something that I've kind of followed with a lot of the other the other models I've um, built and designed it, it since then um, so as you can see again the the roof is is metal because that means it's nice and thin you have these very very thin edges uh, so when it fits on um, it looks you know it looks really quite fine when viewed when viewed from top it's not glued on because at some point I keep saying I will go back and I'll fit a driver figure uh, which obviously I can't do if the if the roof is on um, but yeah so that's that's the that was the kind of the big takeaway for me on this was that you could easily um, find uh, nice reliable kind of off-the-shelf chassis to build a model around you didn't have to worry about building a chassis if that was something you weren't comfortable with um, and working out how you know how to power it and gears and everything else you could you kind of get away from that and just buy something that was that was one thing uh, and then this combination of, of, of media really uh, and using what the you know the best parts for the for the job um, things that didn't go so well on this um, I didn't intend to weather it this decrepitly um, what happened was I, um, I, I it was the first time well not the first time but one of the few time, first few times I tried to paint something in kind of multiple colors normally when I've been I'd been doing a lot of um, wagons as I said in 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 in, in OO gauge and um, what I'd been doing there was painting them essentially a single a single color and adding transfers and then brush painting um, some of the brake gear and underneath in black so there was only one one the color I was spraying here I decided to try and do things properly and I I sprayed it with a primer coat first to tie all the different materials together to give a, a nice single base color um, and then I masked up and I sprayed uh, so I masked off the black bits and sprayed the yellow upper parts and that went really really nicely I pulled off the masking tip and I got a lovely crisp edge so then I repeated the process and masked the yellow area off so I could spray the black piece and again, this this looked like it had gone on well. The black painted really, really nicely, um, and there were no issues until that is, I came to take off the masking tape. And when I pulled the masking tape off, um, there were a couple of areas where the black had run under the masking tape where I'd not quite got it down properly, which I could probably have painted over. It wouldn't have been a huge deal, but um, it caused um, the paints, particularly here. It had bubbled up under the masking tape for some reason um, and completely ruined ruined the yellow the yellow paintwork. Um, now obviously I could have rubbed it down, started again, um, but by this point I, um, I I I was kind of fed up of trying to spray colours and mask and it was really kind of slightly disheartening. So what I thought I'd do instead was just weather it. So I got some rusty paints and rusty weathering and I and I um, I didn't just um, dab that on I literally went at the existing paintwork with cocktail sticks and 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 um I think um uh, some some uh, other sharp tools I don't think I got as far as a knife but um to kind of essentially bubble up the paint and pick at it and then I painted those areas in uh with the rust color to give this kind of you know rusty dilapidated uh look and I think it's worked quite well it's probably a little bit over the top in some places um but it doesn't look it doesn't look too bad uh, especially when viewed from a from a kind of sensible a sensible distance um, I think that works works quite well 
Um, so again, that, that was something new that I that I had a had a play with and learnt with. I tend to like painting my my models with a slightly more um, X Works look, so they're they're nicely painted, but then with a slight amount of weathering to show that they've actually been used. So you know, dirt around the door entrances and things like that, rather than heavily heavily rusted. But this was this was interesting, and as I say, for my first for my first locomotive model, I'm I'm still really really happy with this. Um, it's a lot better. Um, than some of the the models I'd been painting and building before that were just wagons and stuff. Um, so yeah, so this was this was my my introduction to building building models. Um, as I say, this was a, a kit by Narrow Planet. Um, I'm not sure they're currently available. They they per periodically do new batches of the kits. They kind of um, they they print a batch of bodies and get a, a set of etches done and then and then they'll go on sale. Um, but if if it does turn up, it's a really good it's a really good kit. Um, and as I say, if you've not built a a locomotive before it's a nice nice introduction and a nice little nice little model um so yeah so that's that's my first model and as i say that's the first um in what will be a series of videos um looking at uh models that i've now finished building or designing um so we can have a look at the final the final thing and that will complement those short those short clips that i've previously posted showing kind of um work in progress that don't necessarily mean much without the the context of the blog uh, so hopefully you enjoyed that and um, yeah I look forward to to the next video uh, where um, we'll, we'll have a look at a, a steam locomotive instead of a instead of a little diesel uh, okay